Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today I'm going to be talking about low intelligence and homophobia. This is what happens when studies come out and more studies come out and more studies come out and they all start confirming the same thing. And this article is from IFL Science. Researchers find link between low intelligence and homophobia by James Felton. As usual, I'll put the link in the description. I might even put a couple extra links just so it cross references with other uh, studies. I'll read the article most likely word for word and then chat here and there. I might even interrupt myself and talk about a line of thought, but I'll start now. You've all long suspected it, but it's nice to have it confirmed. A study has found a link between lower intelligence and holding prejudiced views about same-sex couples. Researchers from the University of Queensland, Australia, looked at the link between intelligence and attitudes towards same-sex couples, building on previous studies that have shown correlations between having a low IQ and supporting prejudiced views, such as homophobia and racism. Now, there's a bunch of bolded words on the line. There are links to other links, that type thing. This, however, was the first time the link between intelligence and homophobia has been looked at in populations outside the U.S., Cypost reports. Despite the significance and contemporarily... Contemporaneity... <laughs> of the subject matter... Few studies have specifically addressed the link between cognitive ability and attitudes towards LGBT issues. There was no cue there, huh? Study author Francisco Perales told them. The study, published in the journal Intelligence, looked at a sample of 11,564 Australians. Researchers analyzed data from the 2012 Household, Income, and Labor Dynamics in Australia, H... ILDA survey which asks questions to assess people's cognitive abilities. And a 2015 HILDA Hilda surveyed at X respondents about their attitude towards equal rights. Specifically, they were asked to rate the statement homosexual couples should have the same rights as heterosexual couples do. On a scale of one, strongly disagree, to seven, strongly agree. They found, essentially, that the stupider you are, the more likely you are to be prejudiced against same-sex couples. There are well-known correlations between low cognitive ability and support of prejudicial or non-egalitarian attitudes, the authors write in their study. This paper adds to the existing knowledge by providing the first analysis of associations between cognitive ability and attitudes towards LGBTQ issues, I'm putting the fucking Q there for some reason, whatever, it's just habit maybe, individuals with low cognitive ability are less likely to support equal rights for the same-sex couples. The link was especially strong where verbal ability was assessed, and held true after controlling for variables, including education and other economic or social variables. I don't know, they're starting to drill down, nail us down. A 2012 study published in SAGE found a similar correlation between cognitive ability and holding prejudiced attitudes. Looking at over 15,000 data sets in the UK, researchers found that lower intelligence and childhood prejudice greater, uh, in childhood predicted greater racism by the time you reached adulthood. Our results suggest that cognitive abilities play a critical, albeit um, underappreciated, role in prejudice, the authors of the study conclude. Consequently, we recommend a heightened focus on cognitive ability and research on prejudice and a better integration of cognitive, cognitive ability into prejudice models. The authors of the new study concluded that lower intelligence levels seem to be an important precursor to more prejudiced views and suggest strategies involving increased participation in education of young people 
and improving the levels of cognitive ability in the population in general could be an important step towards educating or eradicating prejudice towards same-sex couples. And that ends this particular article. But this was um, something that came up again on my, um, and it came across my attention. This is something that, you know, eventually we're going to have to get to it being a consensus. I don't know if this is saying it's a consensus now, but yeah. The stupider you are, the more prejudiced you are. <laughs> I mean, we can go into the conservative and um, religion, religious stuff, but that just makes me say less critical thinking makes people. You know, as one of the comments says, sheep, so to speak. And the other article it leads to is pretty interesting. It's from the uh, 2012. And it, it's just interesting. Is uh, There's no gentle way to put it. People who give in to racism and prejudice may simply be dumb, according to a new study that is bound to stir public controversy. Um, you know... We can keep doing these studies, and I'm all for it. But I've said in a lot of my podcasts and um, a lot of my well foundations for wellness things, I think it all starts with breathing meditation. Understanding your breathing, how it controls your body, and then in turn, during the developmental cycle of a child's brain and a young adult brain, you match that with meditating or understanding and tips and techniques on your thoughts, your emotions, and how they correlate, and how you could um, make your way through this fucking insane world, so to speak. And it gives us a buffer, it inoculates us to stupid and silly beliefs. And as much as I don't care what people do in their homes, you know, I don't care what we believe in a spaghetti monster or whatever. I do believe that it's dangerous and it's harmful. And people just keep, you know, letting people and get with get on with this bullshit and no one says anything. And maybe I'm the asshole who will, but guess what? Now you're a dumb fuck. Because there's plenty of people out there who like to try to hide their prejudice, their racism, and it was so evident with the Trump administration. You can see it. It was widespread through all family members who just noticed, and it was just almost the same type of memes, too, was, wow, what an eye-opener. Like, this is who we are. This is who these people really are. I mean, there's only so many ways you can spin um, racism in a, in a pure form, no matter how justified you think you are. Because you think your answers and your justifications, the reasons, you come up with some of these stances are logical, and they're not. That's what a lot of people don't get in some of these confrontations I get into on Facebook or really Twitter these days. You don't have solid ground to stand on. Most of the time, if I say something, I've already spotted the flaw. I know it's there's a problem there. And at first, I just try to be nice to try to you know, get to the bottom of it and, like, make an analogy or something that points out the flaw. But the more you get into this, the more it just looks like the stupider you are, the more prejudiced you are. Uh, Low-intelligence adults tend to gravitate towards socially conservative ideologies, the study found. Those ideologies, in turn, stress, hierarchy, and resistance, resistance to change. Attitudes that can contribute to prejudice, Hudson wrote in an email to Live Science. Prejudice is extremely complex and multifaceted, making it critical that any factors contributing to bias are uncovered and understood. Good luck, because no one gives a fuck, especially people who you're pointing it out to. Some of the best people in the world, some of those beautiful heartfelt, good people will snap at you, will call you toxic, will block you, will unfriend you, 
just for pointing out these flaws because it's so fucking confusing and harmful to them. Call it cognitive dissonance, cognitive distortions, which would, would lead to it. You can't just outright state it. So you t- got to try to be savvy and, you know, you make your analogies. And look, I've had it in my close personal life. And in the frontier of social media, it's evident. People will say things and think they're in the right, and it makes sense. And then, you know, when they don't see the flaw, it was so evident recently in the four years of Trump's presidency that it says, has it literally exposed family members and has ended friendships. You're going to have to deal with it sooner or later. You're all going to have to deal with it. My advice is look inward. I don't care how cool you think you are, how many black friends you have, how many gay friends you have, whatever. The things you do and say, the way you phrase your words and your sentences, and I'm not talking about a clarification thing or if you're just talking to somebody. I'm talking about you're, you're arguing these points. You're making it seem like it's a righteous thing and it's uh you know and i'm not even let's not even get into oh uh i don't like your lifestyle and i believe god is against it fuck your god you fucking god of hide and seek your ineffectual genocidal monsters that are in these fucking books that's bullshit you're a fucking prejudice you're a racist don't give me no bullshit where you can hold up a bible or some fucking works from some cavemen in the dark ages, the bronze age, whatever the fuck it was, and you're going to hold it up as evidence that, hey, what they're doing is wrong. My God says so. You're a sheep. You're a brainwashed, indoctrinated fucking morons. Luckily, the world's changed much, but they're still out there. You got Trump elected, right? You got uh, storming the Capitol. All these movements are coming out of woodwork, and proud to fucking show their faces look we're all gonna have these run-ins in our lives we accept the people we love and we know that they don't mean this or that i get it i'm just done with the bullshit the oh um i saw a fucking meme or i watch fox news and alex jones oh and ben fucking dopey shit face shapiro you know, you can be right 15% of the time, but when you're a lying, fucking, conniving scumbag, and you think you're putting on a good show and you're giving good reasons, you know what? You're probably dumb. And where it matters. Okay, how savvy you talk, how popular you are, how many followers you have, how many fans you have, how good your ratings are. It's all bullshit. Anybody could post a fucking cat farting and all of a sudden they could be super famous. They can go in their backyard, pretend they're a Jedi, and all of a sudden, super famous. Millions of people. It doesn't matter. There's no quality control on that. But what is evident is the arguments people make about same-sex marriage. And they all tend to come back to fucking stupidity. You got crazy ideas in there somehow. Oh, I'm not really religious, you know, I believe in God, but I just don't think it's right. They, and then they put it in my face, and what are you fucking talking about? Stop it. Let people be who they are. There shouldn't be a fucking bias and a prejudice at all. There should be, you know, understanding at the very least, and love and acceptance at the, you know, at the best. People want to be in love and... Just fucking be like everyone else. I bet there's fucking studies I could pull out that show same-sex couples raise children better. I mean, you where do you keep the data in your head? Because I think it is stupidity. You don't want to look at data and studies and correlate them and match them. And even someone like me who looks at the first article I read and said... It looks like, you know, all these studies are pointing somewhere because they are. And as a matter of fact, it, it says in the thing, it, it, we've confirmed it. And I don't like to go with that totally. 
Of course, I like to be skeptical on matters like this, but guess what? You're probably stupid. And your cognitive functions are on the low end. That's just it. Stop thinking your arguments have weight, that they're valid, that they make sense, because they don't. And you have people who are promoting these people. And, oh, this is my friend. Yeah, I want to support your friend, too, because you're a friend of mine, right? You're a good guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We help each other. We're old school. And then I watch the fucking video, and the guy's like, oh, you know, these gays, they want to throw it in your face. And, um, you know, I don't think it's right. It's like, you're a fucking Neanderthal. You are a caveman living in modern times. Keep digging yourself deeper into this fucking hole. The smart ones come out and apologize later. And this is also the friend I'm talking about. And I'll have to say something like, oh, I don't mean this about all this, but I just talk this way. Fine. Right? You know, I get it. Still love you. I still love all human beings in general. But... How many times is enough? Right? I mean, you have this in there. So, again, look inward. Be introspective. Think about thinking. Try to be a critical thinker. How do these ideas come in your head? Where do they come from? How are they formed? Do you even remember why and how you came up with this thing that gay shouldn't be married? They shouldn't be able to be have equal rights as everyone else? I mean, it's like so silly. Like, oh, it's, uh, what did I hear once? I heard, uh, oh, uh, it's going to be tough on the child. It's going to be tough on the child, having two same-sex parents. It's going to be made fun of and stuff. Really? Well, can you do that with same-sex, with different-sex parents? What do you think this is? They're kids. We, but if you teach them how to breathe and meditate from fucking young age as a baby toddler growing up we'd be able to deal with this shit so again keep fucking indoctrinating your children keep passing on your beliefs and making it their own where they have no say in it and they're gonna love you right because we all love it's all love family but your friends daughters mothers sisters but you're all just letting it fucking happen okay enough yes stop thinking you're so bright Holy shit. These fucking articles sometimes blow my mind. I get a, um, you know, I want to say, come out and say, it's a fact, you know, you are stupid. And I could produce all these fucking links and but it won't really make sense sometimes to them. It just, it just doesn't work that way. Wish it did. But people who are just unknowingly and fall into certain categories are easily help, helpable you know, um, adaptable, they consider things, especially when it's someone close to them. And granted, I might not be the best at it, you know, because once you're an asshole, I'm an asshole. So, so I, I believe in truth over feelings. That's always been my thing. Well, not always, but in the last 15 years or so, as I'm 49, turning 50, Dive deep into your brains, come up with good reasons, justify them, and talk to your friends, talk to people. Stop backing these arguments up. It's just, uh, I don't know. The cognitive roots of prejudice towards same-sex couples. I mean, this is like the third link from a link I'm finding in abstracts, and this isn't just something they're thinking up. You know, and oh, you know, they're testing it. It's me and verified, and they're retesting. And from 2000, well, I'm, I'm looking at 2012, 14, and 18. And maybe the article is written as a wrap up for 20. I'm not sure. But as I said, I started on IFL Science. The article was by James Felton. And I branched over and went to, geez, what is this, uh, Live Science and. Um, Science Direct. I'll put them in there in my in my description in my YouTube. Everybody, be well, be safe. Hope everybody's doing well. Between this fucking snow and the COVID, I'm finally 
in that zone where I'm not even sure what's going to be happening in the next couple of months. But we persevere. Don't be stupid. Take care, everybody.